Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic and wonderful. Everything here is great. Uh, it's really good. I got to spend between 8 and 10 hours down here this weekend. I only know that uh, because I listen to my normal Friday podcast, which is the Making It podcast and the After Show, which was like about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes. But I also listen to the entirety of the new serial series called um, The Trojan Horse, Horse Affair. I listen to that entire series while working on these shelves. Um, so I spent between 8 and 10 hours working on these shelves this weekend. And if you recall from past videos, these shelves were already assembled and glued. So I spent between 8 and 10 hours finishing these shelves. And by finishing these shelves, I mean applying finish. That's not technically all I did. I also um, reinforced these corners and shelf joints with five sixteenths inch dowels. Uh, I didn't really, we didn't really talk a whole lot about this build project. So let me give you the brief overview. These are shelves that are intended to be hanging shelves that will hold books and specifically manga. My my uh, fiance M is into manga right now and she wants to kind of display some of it. So manga is not super heavy. It's not the most, re you know, it's not, the paper is really light and so the books are not heavy, which means I don't have to put like a whole lot of effort into making sure these are stable, but I did, right? They're three quarter inch. This came from four quarter cherry. These are all solid cherry. Uh, I planed them down to three quarters of an inch. The shelf dimensions, the outside to outside, well, actually, these are sized so that I can mount these between studs, meaning that the center of this board and the center of the other outside board are exactly 32 inches apart. So I can hang these on a stud with keyholes. I'm gonna drill keyholes in the verticals and uh, hang them by the verticals. And then the books will sit in here. So to make the shelf assembly a little bit easier on myself, as well as to give a little bit of strength to the middle shelf, um, I chose to use rabbits and dados. Uh, more because I hadn't done it before. I don't know that I've ever actually used rabbits and dados. I, I mentioned this to a friend uh, through text messaging that I have done lots of tenons. I've done through tenons. I've done stopped uh, non, non through tenons. Um, I've, you know, hand cut quite a lot of tenons, but I've never done dados. Um, so I thought it'd be just kind of a fun experiment. I got a set of uh, box joint blades last year for Christmas. So they have a real nice flat top grind and I used it to cut these um, rabbits and dados and that, that helped with the assembly. I glued it all and then I came back and penned these with some one and a half inch dowels. So there's one and a half inch of five sixteenths dowel. Uh, the dowel was poplar, so there's a little bit of contrast. I really like the way that the dowels look, um, poplar dowels look when they get an oil finish. They turn like a dark green, like a, it looks really good. And I thought it'd be an interesting, you know, call out point. The point is why it took me so long is when I made these, I made sure these joints were all nice and tight, and then when I glued them, I decided to just glue them, and I would fix, um, I would I would deal with the squeeze out later. Instead of wiping the squeeze out, out of these corners, uh, I decided to deal with it after it dried, and that was probably about an hour per shelf, meaning per unit. So there's two of these. It took me about an hour per to clean out this glue squeeze out satisfactorily. <laughs> I had pre-sanded the the tops and bottom faces of the shelves. I had not I had pre-sanded the inside face of this shelf, but I had not pre-sanded the outside face because I knew I was going to be adding dowels, and I wanted to you know true this up later. So after doing all that, I spent a good probably about five of this five or six of the hours sanding these. I went from eighty grit to 100, 120. To 150. I stop at 150 when I'm using an oil finish 
which we're going to talk about in a second. These are oil finished, not a film finish. Uh, so I stop at 150 when I'm doing an oil based finish. Uh, I think that that gives the uh, that gives the varnish something to grab a hold of. It also gives the the wood still feels like wood. It doesn't feel weird and fake. Sanded on them, hand sanded at 150, all of it, corners, all that. Then I applied the finish. So the finish took a lot longer than I expected. And that is because, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, this is the first project that I have used Tried and True's varnish oil. Uh, Tried and True is a brand of uh, finishes that use polymerized linseed oil, which is just linseed oil or flaxseed oil that has been heated uh, in the absence of oxygen. So it kind of pre-polymerizes the oil. Flaxseed oil or linseed oil raw will eventually harden, but it'll take a very long time. Uh, it takes a long time for those chains to to form into long polymers. It takes a lot of oxygen. This is an oxidizing finish. This is not a drying finish. It doesn't dry. It cures through oxidation. Um, and so speeding that process up by pre-polymerizing the oil is kind of, you know, what this company does. This is their varnish oil, which means it's got varnish, which is, they claim, pine resin. Uh, I Looking up the MSDS, it has a... Um, it's using another company's resin, which seems to be a natural resin, but I'm not 100% positive that it is. But it is a, you know, again, a polymerized resin, a resin ester, because if, if you've ever messed with pine resin, it doesn't ever really, I mean, it, it eventually turns to amber, but that takes forever, right? Uh, what I have found is I did a sample to make sure that I was going to like this product. Uh, this is a sample of that same cherry, um, sanded to 150, hand sanded, and two coats of the tried and true on it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I really, you can hear it. It, it still feels like wood. It doesn't feel fake. It looks great. It's got a nice sheen, a real, like, just dull luster, which is what I was going for, like a satin luster. So, I, excited by that, I went ahead and did it. Now, the thing is... I have used a lot of oil finishes. I've tried most of them. Um, I've, you know, I've used a lot of linseed oil. I like just boiled linseed oil. It works great. Um, this can is disgusting because I've used it a bunch. I've tried teak oil. I like teak oil for outdoor projects. It's kind of made for outdoor use. Uh, Danish oil, which is really an oil that's got a lot of... Um, solvents and other chemicals in it uh, but also includes i believe that the watco brand also includes um varnish so it's probably uh you know plastic varnish a, a non-natural resin the thing is these products even this one you buy this boiled linseed oil in a can from clean strip this is not boiled linseed oil it is it's got mostly boiled linseed oil on it, but this also has a bunch of chemical dryers in it to try to speed up the drying process. Uh, the same with the teak oil. This is not teak oil. You know, teak oil is just something that you apply to teak. Uh, that's not what this is. This has, you know, probably linseed oil and other chemicals in it to help the drying process because linseed oil takes a long time to dry. Uh, if you're not aware, linseed oil is kind of the, what, what, oil paints are made out of artist oil paints and they can take if if applied heavily month to dry two months to dry so the secret to using this stuff is putting on as thin as humanly possible wiping off 100 percent of the excess and letting it cure and if you do that it works great that's exactly what the can tells you to do if you go to the company's website and you watch their youtube videos that's exactly what they tell you to do and if you do it the way they tell you to do it it turns out beautiful now, the thing is, the reason it took so long is this stuff is thick. Like, you, you buy boiled linseed oil like this that it probably has mineral spirits and some chemical dryers in it. Uh, it's really, really runny. You basically just kind of dump it on and wipe it off, and it soaks in pretty heavily. This stuff is kind of like almost a honey consistency. or, or It's not quite that thick, more like maybe maple syrup consistency. And so when you put it on... 
to put on that extremely small amount requires a, just a couple of drops on a rag and just lots of vigorous rubbing. And the more you rub, the better. It really kind of brings out that hand rubbed sheen. It brings out that hand rubbed feel. Uh, it, I think it really, um, I mean, it made this wood just look absolutely gorgeous. It has a beautiful sheen. I do need to put a second coat on. I've only got one coat on it so far. Uh, and I got, if, if I'm looking at this in a certain lighting, you can see some streaking just from where I didn't overlap quite enough. I was using a very small applicator. The company tells you to burnish between coats. They suggest using quadruple lot steel wool or even just duck cloth they, just to burnish um, any, any fuzzies. I think what I might try, I didn't do it on the sample, <laughs> which is, you know, I should probably do exactly what I did on the sample. What I did on the sample was exactly what they suggested to do. They suggested that you sand this to your final grit. I sanded it to 150. They suggest you burnish it with steel wool, which I did. They suggest you put on a, the thinnest coat possible, wait an hour, wipe it off until there's absolutely nothing coming off on your rag, which I did. I did that on this also. Then they suggest burnishing it again with steel wool or a duck cloth. Another super thin coat, wait an hour, come back, wipe it all off, done. That's their suggestion. Two coats, done. Um, you can go more, but that's their suggestion. With this, I did the sanding, I did the burnishing, I did the first coat. That's all it's done. It is dry to the touch now. Um, there is a little tiny, maybe not completely dry to the touch. Like it, it'll, there's a still a little bit on here I could wipe off, and I'm probably going to do that today. And I think that's just because I didn't have the heater on last night, so the garage got a little cold and it didn't, it hasn't had, you know, actually, no, it's not really doing anything to my fingers. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is combine, I don't know why I said it that way, the second and third step. And I think I'm just going to apply the second coat with the synthetic steel wool and see how that works out. Instead of doing the burnishing between, uh, I will use the burnishing as the second coat applicator and see how that works. You know, again, I probably should just do what I did on the sample because the sample turned out great. But at the same time, I've, I've never do, I always experiment. And this is kind of an experiment anyway in building. There's no fasteners in these shelves. Um, you know, I'm not convinced that they're going to stay together forever. In fact, I think that, you know, a significant side load will just shatter them, but uh, that's not really what they're intended for. They're more of a decorative element, not necessarily a robust bookcase. So um, I'll experiment. I've already experimented with the construction. I'll experiment further with this finish. But right off the bat, I really liked it. I really liked the feel of it. I didn't wear gloves. It's all, you know, food safe, all natural. You know, a lot of these finishes will claim they're food safe. Like I think boiled linseed oil says it's food safe, but only after it's fully cured. And that's because all the chemical dryers and such have evaporated off. Um, this doesn't have anything like that. This has only food safe products in it. It's all 100% solids is what they say. So there's nothing in here that's evaporating. Whatever you put on the wood is staying on the wood. So that's why it comes becomes very, very, very important to wipe off all the excess. Otherwise you'll end up with a gummy finish that will never fully cure or it will take a very long time to fully cure. There you go. So I had a great weekend. Got to spend a lot of time doing work that I enjoy doing. Uh, this is the first time I've ever applied a finish that made my arm sore. Like I felt like I had gone to the gym. I buffed it so much. <laughs> but I think they turned out beautiful. So I think M's gonna be really, really happy. We'll have to see. So thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is labyrinth. It is a noun meaning a maze-like series of connected tunnels and passages through which it is difficult to find one's way. He ran terrified as the enraged minotaur chased him throughout the labyrinth. Labyrinth, L-A-B-Y-R-I-N-T-H. Also, an excellent movie. And I think uh, Ravensburger did a labyrinth board game that was pretty good too.